Hi guys, and welcome to your fifth Xcode programming tutorial. Let me quickly recap on what we did in our last tutorial. We looked at IB outlets and created an application where we could hide a button, disable a button, and then set it back to what it was originally. This is an important tutorial to watch before you watch this tutorial if you don't have prior experience with programming in iOS. Today we're going to do a three or four part tutorial, and you don't need to watch each part, it's more as a reference video. We're going to be looking at segmenting controls in this video. In our next video, we'll be looking at UI switches. In the next video after that, we'll look at scroll views, and then we might look at a few other basic UI elements. As you've noticed, we've only used buttons and labels as per yet, so it'll be a good introduction to some of the other UI elements you can use in your applications. You'll see what I mean when we get started. So open up Xcode and create a new project. We're just going to do a single view application, as we always do. And I'm going to call this Segmented Control. And hit Create. For some of you, you probably don't know what a Segmented Control is, but I'm sure that as soon as I show it to you, you'll notice very quickly. It's this thing here. It doesn't look much like a Segmented Control in the Objects panel. But if we drag it on, we can see that it actually looks quite familiar. You'll notice that by default, there are, are two segments to the segmented control, and it's got this thick, not-so-nice-looking look. So let's make it look a bit nicer. Firstly, there's a good thing to notice is this style option. You can have a plain segmented control, a bordered one, which just adds a faint border around the edge, or you can do a bar. I like the bar most because it's thin and it doesn't look as confronting on the screen. You can also change the tint, which is essentially the colour. As you can see, when you change the colour, you'll actually be setting only one colour and the other one will be either darker or lighter. So let's click on the colour and select other, and we'll pick a orangey colour. You'll notice we've selected this fairly light orange and then by default the selected segment will grow darker to indicate to the user it's been selected. If we want to add a third segment to the segmenting control, we can simply do this by clicking on the up button next to segments. This one here. You can add as many segments as you like, but eventually the text will overflow into another segment. So do be sensible about how you use them. To change the text of each segment, you can either double click on it and change the text to your desired text, or, you can select the segment to control, and then in the right hand panel, select the segment that you are trying to change the text of. I'm going to select segment 3, and then change the text, which is actually called the title, here. So let's call it fourth. So you probably notice something quite bizarre, which is, I've selected segment 3, and that's the last segment, and yet, it's also the fourth segment. So why is it called segment 3? Let me explain it in a bit of detail, but not too much because it's really a, something you'll learn in later programming. This is a form of array or memory ID that you're assigning the segmented control. So it starts at 0, then goes to 1, then 2, then 3. This often happens in programming. So although it may look to you like it's the first segment, second segment, third segment, and fourth segment, it's actually the 0 segment, then the first, second, and third. So this does have four segments, but the last one is called the th segment 3, and the first is segment 0. So let's add some text to segment 2, and that's actually 3, and we'll call this third. And what we're going to do is we're going to make an application where as the user changes the selection, it will display the result in a label. So let's drag in a label, and you know how to change the text of a label from our second Hello World tutorial. And we'll just make the text of the label empty at the moment. Well, no, we won't do that. We'll make it first, because after all, when the user starts the application, by default, it will be on first. Let's make the label a bit wider, so that for longer words, like second, it'll still fit, and center the text. Now we need to create IB outlets for both of these, and an action for when the value of the segmented control selected segment is changed. So, go into your assistant editor, Select Automatic so that you're on ViewController.h. Then after this at Interface line, open a curly bracket, press Enter so Xcode will insert the second one for you. And then inside here, 
right click and drag on the segmented control and drag it in until you see this blue line within the curly brackets. Make sure the connection is an outlet. The type is UI segmented control. The storage is strong and we're going to name it segmented control numbers. And as you can see there's our IB outlet. Then we need an outlet for the text for the label so that we can change its text. And so we'll call this label text. You can call it whatever you want, just make sure you remember what you called it. And then we need to create an action. You'll notice that usually when you have an action, it's associated with a button being clicked. But in this case, we're going to have an action when the segmented control, the value of it changes. And the value of the segmented control is which segment is selected. By default, it'll be on first, but we might want it to, when you click on second, that's a value change. And so when the values change, we want an action to occur. So right click and drag underneath the curly brackets, select the connection to be an action, and then make sure the event is value changed. Any of the other ones will tr be triggered as soon as they even touch the segment to control. We only want the event to trigger if they change the value on the segment to control. And let's call this change text, the action. So remember, it is still an action. I know at first you might think to yourself, hang on, this isn't an action, but it is. So be aware of that when you use it. And now we've got our action. Now let's go back to our single editor and go into our viewcontroller.m. Inside our change text method, we need to set up some if statements to detect which segment is selected. So this currently is going, okay, so they've changed the value of the segment to control. Now we need to detect which segment they selected. To do this, we'll use something called an if statement. I'll go through if statements in a later tutorial, so for now I'll just follow along. If, and then you'll get the first one. And you'll notice there's two boxes, there's a blue one that says condition, and another one called statements. Inside condition type segmented control numbers dot selected segment index equals equals one, equals equals zero, sorry. Then we want to make our label text dot text equal to at talking mark talking mark one and then outside of the talking marks put a semicolon then type else if segmented control numbers dot selected segment index equals equals one and then label dot text label text dot text equals at talking mark talking mark two and then put a semicolon then copy those three lines, you can see which ones, and paste it once, and then inside that change the selected segment index value to be 2, and the text to be 3. Then finally add an else, open curly bracket, press enter, and type label.text equals at talking mark, talking mark 4, semicolon. I'll give you just a second to catch up. Okay, so let me quickly walk you through what all of this actually does. The first time, we're going, if the current selected segment is 0, which is actually the first one, then let's say the text of the label is 1. If the segment selected is 1, which is the second segment, then let's set the label's text to be 2, and so on. And then finally we're saying, so we've done covered the first three, if it's the first one, do this. If it's the second segment that's selected, do this. If it's the third one that's selected, do this. And if it's anything else, do this. It's a bit of a risky way to do it, and it's probably better to go else if segmented control numbers dot select a segment index equals equals three, then do this, and then do else, which means something's gone wrong because there are only four options, and then display an error message. But that's a bit too complex, and so we won't cover it today. So that's just going, if none of these are true, then do this. The reason we type else is otherwise it will go if it equals zero, do this, then if it equals this, and this, and this, and it will just go on and on. Whereas we, when we type else, it goes if it equals zero, do this, if it doesn't do this, oh, no, it does, and then it won't bother doing these other two. So it saves a bit of memory and a bit of effort, and later on when you develop more complex apps, you'll find that you get errors if you don't follow this properly. So that should work, so let's run our application and see what happens. So we've got no errors, so that's a good sign. Let's try changing the value of our segmented control. 
as you can see when I go to the second one, it detects that the value has been changed and runs this method. Then it says if it equals 1, and this is 0, 1, 2, 3, so it equaled 1, then make the text of the label 2. So that worked. So now if I click on the th third one, it should go, okay, that's the second index. I know it's the third segmented control segment, but as we just went through, it goes 0 first. So it should hopefully then go, okay, then set the label's text to be 3. Let's see if that works. It does. And then, if it, let's try clicking on 4. So it's gone, none of these are true. Let's just do the other one. And so that's what it's done. And then we can go back to first, and we can go in a random order. And it works really well. Segmented controls can be really useful as a menu item, and to control various objects. So this is a good example of how you can use a segmented control. Obviously, you might not want to control a label's text, and any code you want when they change this, when the user changes the value of the segmented control, you put inside the if statement. This is the if statement. So this is for the first segment, the second segment, the third, and so on. Say you only had two segments, then what you'd have is you'd have this, and then inside each one, you'd have the code for when that segment was clicked. So if you had a segmented control that had two segments, you'd have 0 and 1. And if it was 0, then put the code for when the first segment is selected. And if it was 1, put the code for when the first, for the, when the second segment is selected, sorry. So I hope that's been a bit good help to you. And in our next tutorial, part 2 of this tutorial, we're going to be covering a UI element very similar to the segmented control, but it's a switch, which is essentially a segmented control that only has two segments. And you can see it here. So I look forward to seeing you in that tutorial. And until then, like and subscribe this video, and if you have any questions, message us through YouTube, visit us on Facebook, or check out our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>